I put up a video a short time ago talking about Johnny Mercer and about the trouble that he finds himself in, and I realize that I haven't gone through all the details, so I'll do that now. Um, this is a an inquiry conducted by Lord Justice Hayden Cave, and it's called Operation Northmore, and it's an inquiry into uh, allegations of wrongdoing, 675 allegations of wrongdoing. I mean, there's an example of 54 people who were killed by one particular SAS squadron in what was described as questionable behavior. And, uh, and, and, and the problem with Mercer is that he seems to be both running with the fox and with the hounds. And this is about events that took place in the early part of the century, between about 2010 and 2013, while Britain was in Afghanistan, and the SAS was going from house to house, raiding and then killing people that it found there. And the question really is whether or not the SAS were knowingly killing people uh, who were innocent and framing them by gun drops. Uh, sometimes called curtain shooting. So they get a they, they, they get a soldier, a British soldier, to carry an extra weapon, which is then dropped behind a curtain, proving that the um, Afghan man uh, is armed and ready to shoot, and can therefore be executed, targeted, uh, killed off immediately. Now, Johnny Mercer had warned Ben Wallace, the then Defence Minister, that there were credible allegations against British troops and that the law has possibly been broken and uh, that there should be an investigation. And yet at the same time, um, <coughs> when Operation Northmore uh, was started, he confirmed firstly in twenty. 20 that uh, British troops would not face prosecution for any crimes in Afghanistan and he also actively spoke out against the investigation taking place. So he seems to want an investigation but not on those terms, not on the terms that currently exist. And he made this fairly clear on Friday. He said to the judge that his faith in the system to interrogate these issues is not where it needs to be. This is an extraordinary statement from a British minister. In other words, it's a statement that he doesn't trust the legal system. Well, he may be right. He may be right that the legal system is messed up. And the legal system may be right that the political system is messed up. I happen to think both are messed up. You only have to look at what happens to NHS whistleblowers to see that there's a sort of connivance between the legal system and the political system to delay, delay, delay until the claimants go away. Or at least that's the impression that is given. But here we're looking at, we're looking at a very dark period from British history where British troops were on the ground fighting in Afghanistan. For what reason? Because we then left Afghanistan while, um, what's his name, Raab was sunning himself on the beach in Crete. Factor 10, factor 10. Just madness. Factor 10 didn't get him into number 10, did it? And there are officers and soldiers worried that should their names be recorded in the legal documents then even even if the even if the case is sealed even if the even if there's an assurance of secrecy all there needs to be is another wiki leaks drop and their names are all over the media and their lives are in danger i think there has to come a point where where, where we have to acknowledge either we are on the side of the good, or we are soiled beyond repair, like Donald Trump on a bad moment. And I think, I think we are not on the right side of history 
in this particular situation. I think the idea of of a long-winded investigation is not necessarily the right way forward for any of these issues. It's certainly proven not to be the right way forward for the uh, post office or, or for Windrush or for the haemophilia crisis. Maybe the time has come to recognize that this trust that the governments in the past have had in inquiries is now misplaced. <laughs> Things just simply need to go to a court and be thrashed through by a court that has full powers to do its job. And, uh, and, and, and we need to prosecute people. But we can't. I, I don't think we can we can say there's one rule for uh, for British soldiers and another for Russian soldiers, for example. Going house to house and killing anybody who happens to be male, gender killing effectively, simply because they represent a threat. This is not this is not justice, this is not right, this is this is not um civilized. And if this is the way that the British Army has decided uh, that it's worth fighting in Afghanistan, thank God we left Afghanistan, but why were so many lives sacrificed for that effort in the first place? Why? Um, and and you, you, you come back to that question which is going to be um, held like a cloud over Gaza, at what point is enough? And I think we come to the same conclusion uh, about Afghanistan that we come to about Gaza. One death is enough. And a, a, a death, particularly of a civilian who has not threatened anyone, who has been framed or has been killed in a strike, is enough, is enough. And if the SAS has been involved in this sort of atrocity, it needs to be, it, it, it needs to be brought to a, to a head, to a conclusion, and to justice. It should never have happened. And I think Johnny Mercer Johnny Mercer is doing this honour thing. I think he's wrong. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry, but I think he's completely wrong here. I think there's room for honour, but the honour was lost. The honour was lost when we abandoned Afghanistan. The honour was lost, I think, when the SAS started uh, with their summary executions. <laughs>